And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Deadlands Doomtown, except the word Deadlands is no longer in it. Now it's called Doomtown Reloaded. Now, Doomtown or Dead, Deadlands is a very popular western. It's called Weird West because there's magic in it, there's a little bit of a steampunk in it, and the, the, it's a very popular theme. There's a role-playing game, but they made a collectible card game about it a while ago, and AEG has brought it back, although not as a collectible card game, here a self-contained box of cards, although they will be releasing packs of cards, but no rares or super rares. You'll be able to build your decks, although anything you need to play the game itself is in this box. Now, I tried to play the old one a long time ago, and but it's been so long, I can't remember. I can't do any kind of comparison between this and the, and the new one. So I'm gonna be looking at this one. And when I first got this one, it was a bit tough. My first couple games, I was like, I'm not really sure. So the reason my review isn't out as quickly, I had this game for weeks and weeks now, as I might normally get them out is because I wanted to make sure I knew what I was talking about. I'm still not quite sure I know, but I know a lot more than I used to. Um, a Western themed collectible, or I guess, uh, living card game or whatever it's called at this point in time. Let's check it out. The game comes with two boards, which aren't really necessary. They're just here to help you. They show you different poker hands and tell you how posses are formed and some other things. But what players are going to do is they're going to be starting with a home. And this is, in essence, the main card of your deck showing which group you're with, your outfit per se. And there are four that come in this set. There's the Sloan Gang. Think of them as your outlaws. Then, of course, there's the good guys, the law dogs. Then there's the Morgan Cattle Company. These guys are ranchers, but they also also have a tendency to have guys who experiment and make weird, think uh, steampunk type style guns and things. And then you have the fourth ring, which is a weird supernatural circus. And so you're going to start with this, but then you're going to be building a deck. Now the game comes with starter um, decks that you can play with, but when you build a deck, your deck is going to be essentially a deck of cards. You can see here, for example, that Sloane, who's the leader of Sloane's gang, um, she is the king of spades. So you can see that it's also a card from a typical 52 card deck. However, you don't have to have one king, one queen of each of the four suits. Instead, you can make the deck any way you want. So when you're building a deck, you're thinking about the cards that you're putting in the deck, as well as the hands that you might get over the course of a particular game. Two times over a particular game, you're going to be using poker hands. At the beginning of each turn, you'll draw five cards, and the lower hand gets to go first, which is pretty cool. And then many times throughout the course of the game for jobs and or shootouts, the higher poker hand will matter. Now, there's four suits in the game. We have the spades. So you can see there's Sloan, and here's Dr. Don Edwards. Spades. Here's Mongwal the Mighty, he's from the circus group. And each of these guys has different abilities, so spades are dudes. Here's Bobo and Steel Archer, and I'm not gonna show you all of them because there is some fun in finding out about them. These folks have a cost in Ghost Rock, which is the currency of the game. Uh, many of them have an upkeep cost you have to pay each turn. And then they, they have uh, influence. Now influence matters over the course of the game because that's how you win. As the game progresses, you will be building cards uh, from another suit, the diamond suit, that are different locations. Here's the pharmacy, maybe here's the Bank of California. Each of these locations will provide you with control points. And there are other ways to get control points. If you ever have more control points at a locations that you control, so if I have Steel Archer at the Bank of California, I control it. If my opponent sends over uh, maybe uh, Androlicus Brocklehurst over, then he would control those two points. If you have more control points than your opponent has influence points, then you win the game. 
So you have to be very cautious not to lose all your cowboys and or let them control too many spots on the board. So there's different locations. These locations will give you income at the bottom. You the, the place that you start with, so here let's say I started with um, let's say I start with the Sloan Gang, I get three coins every turn. If I built uh, Cardo's Bounties, I'd get an extra coin. If I built the Bank of California, I'd get three extra coins per round. So diamonds are extra buildings. Then you have hearts. Now hearts are made up of two different things. They might be weapons, like for example, this auto revolver. These you can put on different people. That is auto revolver has a difficulty, so you'll need someone who can actually build it. Uh, but you have regular weapons too. Pearl, pearl handled revolver or equipment that you can have, like for example, a pinto. Sometimes they're hexes that some of the characters who can cast hexes or spells like this raising hell or a blood curse. And sometimes they're just used for different things, whiskey flask. Now you notice there's a lot of different terminologies on these and I'm not gonna get into all that, but there is one word here, boot. Boot is this uh, game's tap where you will boot something and turn it sideways. But there's another interesting thing, boot hill. Now as the game progresses, you will be discarding cards into a discard pile. And by the way, this is a clubs. Clubs are like special cards, like hired guns or hot lead uh, flying or lady luck or one good turn. And so the clubs are those, but you'll be discarding cards in a pile, but sometimes you'll be discarding people in the boot hill, which is like a discard pile, except when you run out of cards, you won't reshuffle boot hill they're gone forever. So goodbye, Romero. We never knew you. Now, I'm not going to go into all the different terminology and things that are involved in a shootout, but many times you will be able to take one person and they will call out another person. So maybe Marianne Seville is calling out Sheriff Dave Montreal, which would be really insanity because uh, Sheriff is much better, but you never know why they might do this. There might be a card that they're going to play. There might be uh, more guys that will run up to it because they'll form a posse. Perhaps Sanford Taylor is coming up and Andralicus is coming up and then Steven comes over to help the Sheriff. Whatever there might be, there might be different people involved, but whenever you have uh, a shootout, you're going to be drawing a handful of poker cards. Now, normally when you draw a hand of poker cards, you draw five cards. But anyone who's a stud, that's a silver bullet, if he's my shooter, I'm going to get to draw three extra cards. So I have a hand of eight, and I'm going to make the best hand of five cards out of that eight. Um, and if he's in my posse, he'll add an extra one because he's a silver bullet. He only gets the three if he's the main character. My opponent would, let's say they say, well, you know what, we're going to send out Sanford to, he'll get an extra two. So they're drawing seven cards. But because they have Marion and Androlicles with them, both of these guys have ones on them, but they're copper bullets. Those are draws. That means after the, he draws the seven cards, he can discard two cards and redraw two of them. And again, players are trying to get the best poker hand. Down here are all the different poker hands, which are basically your typical poker hand, except for the dead man's hand is the highest one, even though I've never seen that. And you say, wait a minute, Vassal. Five of a kind isn't a normal hand either. That's correct, but it's very possible to get such hands in this game. Now, how do you, these are called cheating hands. Maybe I have three of a kind, but they're three seven of spades. Well, there are many characters who will say if your opponent reveals a cheating hand. For example, here, this uh, one good turn says cheating resolution. I get three ghost rock when someone when someone else is caught cheating. So there's different things you can do. Many of the different characters say that when your opponent is caught cheating or if your opponent displays a cheating hand, something will happen. So you have to be very cautious. A uh, cheating hand could actually end up making you lose. So the basic turn of the game is going to involve players playing cards in front of them, maybe new locations or playing people out. Those people might move from location to location. They might move out. They might even move into their opponent's location. Uh, some of the movement causes a player to uh, boot. They might try to do a job. A job is handled very similar to a shootout. They might call people out for a shootout. You might boot different locations you have to get the special abilities on them. You might play cards from your hand. Eventually, when all the players pass in a row, a round ends and you go and see if anybody's won, and you continue to do this turn after turn, getting money, paying your upkeep on people, until one player wins.
I gotta mention the rules here. The rules are, you know, they explain everything in the game. Although there's a few rules of the game that I thought they could have explained in greater detail, namely um, on how the the difficult the special weapons worked and things like that. But the game is not the easiest game to rock. It took me a while. And then uh, they have this getting to know Gamora and learn to play in one turn. And they actually have a turn of a game and they tell you how to play and exactly what cards to play on your turn. And I thought, oh, are you kidding me? But I'm telling you, I sat down and worked through this one step at a time and the game made sense. This was so helpful when you play this, use this. But be prepared. This is not a game that a newcomer to game area, I wouldn't be like, hey, gateway game. No, this is not that. This is some pretty deep stuff. And the game plays so differently once you know what you're doing. When you're first like, oh, let's go out. We're going out in the posse. I'm bringing everybody with me. Guns are blazing. Well, that might work. And it might also get all your guys killed. Because the fight will continue. I have my guy against your guy. One of them gets killed. By the way, when you beat someone with a poker hand, it's a difference in the numbers. So let's say I have a straight flush, okay? That's a hand ranking of nine, and you have a flush, which is a hand ranking of six. You have to take three casualties amongst your posse. Now, um, you can one casualty sends a guy to discard pile. You can send a guy to boot hill, never to return, for two casualties. But still, if I have a nine and you have a two, I can do a lot of damage. And then we go again, unless someone retreats. But many times retreating means I'm giving you my bank. Here, have fun. You have the control points. So players will be tempted to go in the guns of blazing and you could literally lose this game or win this game on the first turn. Now that likely is not gonna happen. And as the game progresses, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, I should do this, move these people here. When's the best time to go in and take over their stuff? When you go into someone else's property and a fight starts, your people People get one it and tokens on them, puts bounties on them, and you can yeah, kill them and you get the bounty. Uh, deck building was really interesting for me in this game. Like I said, trying to make a, a deck like, ha ha, I'm going to pull that dead man's hand. And at the same time, making it thematic instead of the deck actually works. So I enjoy this. I really did. But I'm telling you, it took me several games to get to that point because I was really lost. So be prepared for a game that has a great deal of depth. I'm also very curious, while this was entertaining and good, um, I really enjoyed the first two decks, the Law Dogs and the Sloan's Gang. They're very interesting. They're balanced and you should play them first. The other ones are also interesting, but I kept thinking, I wish I had just a few more cards to switch in and out. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the, the packs of this that come and how they fit into the whole thing. As it is, I am giving this game a good recommendation. I think it's an excellent game. However, realize what you're getting into. This is a little bit higher in the difficulty scale and it's going to take a bit before you really understand it. Go through the practice game, play multiple times, play with the different factions, try a little bit of deck building. Now I think though in the long run, that's a rewarding experience. That's gonna offer you many different things. Now uh, one thing, this, this is a, uh, a two plus player game. I'm a, I'm a kind of a proponent of, I usually like to play games like Magic and things like this, two player. So I have not played it with more than two um, and I, I don't even have a desire to. This game reminds me a lot of Android Netrunner because when I first played that game, it kind of blew my mind and it was neat, but I was like, how do you, how am I gonna get good at it? So I, same thing here, skill is really gonna matter here. Sure, there's luck. And I'll tell you that drawing poker hands for the shootouts is so fun. I love that. I love when I'm drawing eight cards and redrawing three of them and sitting there and thinking, okay, I'm, huh? No, I don't got a good hand at all. Four of a kind, and then he says, oh, five of a kind. Ah. Or you have a cheating hand. Your hand rank drops by two levels. What? So, nice game, cool game, check it out. Definitely one I think you might need to try before you buy, but you might want to try it multiple times. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.